welcome to part two of the series where I am taking the, um, <clears throat> or making, getting uh, ODB2 readings via this um, Bluetooth <clears throat> ODB2 reader uh, and a microcontroller uh, and a display, which I don't yet have, um, and mounting that into the stock, um, well, not this one, but the stock uh, Miata vent. Um, to follow along with this, uh, I'll post a video up above uh, for part one, so you can watch that first if you haven't followed or if you haven't done that yet already, just to get some background, because um, I'm not going to go into great detail uh, about where I've what I've done so far. Anyway, this is the, I'll call it my first draft still because I may still have to make tweaks, but this is my 3D printed model uh, of the vent that I will be using, um, and it is a uh, match to in terms of dimensions and sizing to the actual stock unit um, <clears throat> and the idea is that this will be glued together at some point um, but I have now got just got in the ESP32 S3 uh, microcontroller that I'll be using um, for and uh, along with a 2.1 inch IPS display that will be mounted on the front here um, that will be LVC um, covered with a vent ring and that'll be part of the vent system. As I mentioned before, you've got some air movement through that vent that will insert in, display will be there and then the stock ring will go around and it'll all be secure into the, um, the driver's side, right side vent. Um, anyway, just a quick update today uh, because I haven't got all the bits and pieces but just to show you what I'm thinking in terms of the mounting of the controller and the um, um, the this is the a 40 pin FPC connector breakout board. Uh, the general right now where I'm thinking of going with this and I haven't really landed for sure is um, probably going to be gluing, you know, these pieces will be glued together, but this will be mounted. Uh, the microcontroller will be mounted um, onto that area there. I've already confirmed fit um, with this here. And then this guy, because of the ribbon cable, will come through from the display here. And I can't really bend it will have to sort of slide in here. So I'm probably going to be mounting this either like that uh, or flat. Um, and then I need to mount solid or roughly 27 cable uh, wires to the microcontroller because yeah, the display is just, um, it's actually meant for HDMI connectivity, the display. So it needs a fair bit to work with um, the world of ESP32s. Um, it's a RGB and um, SPI interface and that requires again I think it was 27 connections um, to talk uh, for the microcontroller display that's why I needed to get this monstrous monstrous ESP uh, 32 unit with lots of pinouts so anyway that's the that's where I'm going with this I have some modeling to do I'm kind of maybe gonna wait for the display because I want to test the connection and the spacing of everything you know you can see I've got some close proximity here so I may just do you know, I may mount it like this um, and, and 3D print another um, <clears throat> mounting board or something that I will glue to um, the back of this and then it all gets mounted like that. I just gotta have to do some crazy <clears throat> wire management to make this work. <clears throat> As noted previously in terms of, uh, you know, this connectivity, it's Bluetooth to the to the um, ODB2 reader, so I don't need to worry about, you know, wires for that. I just need to get power to, um, the CSP32, um, I may just wire, do a switching regulator to the uh, five volt uh, VN pin uh, on, onto the, the board, or I may just hack a USB micro cable um, uh, just to plug in, make it a little more plug and play. <clears throat> I'm um, just noticing here too, this does come with RGB LED, so I could even get some funky glowing stuff here if I wanted to inside um, inside the vent. I don't know if I'll get that kind of bling going or not. It's uh, maybe a bit out there, but we'll see. Maybe I'll just have some fun with it. Um, I'm also actually considering, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this or not, but I do, uh, one of my go-to apps for controlling, you know, IoT stuff is called Blink, B-Y-L-N-K. Uh, it's an app that you can build your own components into on um, iPhone and Android, and actually it's got libraries that work directly with Arduino products, ESP32s, 8266s, whatever. And Blink, I may use Blink to allow me to use my phone to customize the screens that I create once I'm done, um, you know, um, modeling out the screen with this so that I'm not having to reprogram uh, every time I want to tweak. I may come up with some you know, some screens that um, are standard um, that, that are selectable, but then maybe I want to tweak 
what appears on the screen. So I haven't figured that out yet. I'll, I'll get, I'll cross that bridge when I, when I get to that point. Um, I also have to double check the display because I'm not sure. I think I got the one that's got a capacitive touch. Um, and I'm pretty sure that between this guy, uh, the FPC connector, it does have the pass through for um, a touch interface. It's got a four wire touch interface um, uh, into it that I can then interface with the ESP32. And it's just a matter of, you know, making the library, getting all the right libraries working together um, uh, to both obviously render the graphics as well as interpret uh, touch on the display for this guy. Um, all right, milestone unlocked. So um, I have the display, obviously, as you can see here. Um, as I mentioned, you can see a rat's nest of wires between the ESP and the display. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, connections. So the previous FPC adapter board I talked about, um, it's not going to work. It, it, it's actually made for uh, a different uh, uh, LCD. So I got a couple of these. Um, essentially, there's the connection from the screen, and then I will be removing uh, this guy and just uh, soldering directly to uh, the board itself. So um, that's that. I gotta be a bit. It's a bit delicate here, so I gotta be careful. But just to give you an idea about how, and I apologize to my light in my room maybe shining in the way here, but show you how the screen kind of will fit in here. It actually does fit within here. I just don't want to push it. And then you can see the ribbon cable will slip through there and then all these pieces will be uh, in the back. Um, and also that that width will fit the shell that I have here. Anyway, you're here for the excitement of hopefully uh, seeing this display uh, show itself off. So I'm going to try to do this. The last time I did this, I had a lot of reflection from the light above, so bear with me. Showing this guy off, showing a bunch of colors. I'm actually pushing on these wires on purpose because um, the connections are all a bit sloppy, so sometimes signals get broken. Um, so I'm rendering some graphics here, JPEGs, I, and you know a bunch of JPEGs in sequence here to animate my logo. And then also just playing a little bit more with the HMI with uh, custom fonts and um, just getting some ideas I'm throwing together right now for, um, you know, the display elements. So I'm thinking about a, a graphical um, arc bar for RPMs and things like that. Um, anyway, that said, you know, my next step is a couple of things. One is trying to get the ESP to talk to uh, the the VGate ODB2 reader. I've uh, been having some challenges there because it's over it's over uh, BLE and most of the um, software out there just uses standard Bluetooth connectivity. Um, so I'm, I've got to figure that out. Uh, as well as this is a touch screen and I'd like to get that working as I understand it does work. Um, the pinouts are already passed through. I just haven't um, played with the code yet to, to test that out. Um, so there's a lot of things I'm working on here. Uh, the code base is quite large right now. It takes about three minutes to compile. Um, anyway, so that is that. Um, so stay tuned. Um, as I progress and hopefully have more successes, I'll, I'll post um, another part to the series. Thanks for watching.